Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Well guys, today we're going to do a simple breakdown and cleaning of the Taurus PT-1911-45 ACP pistol. Um, this pistol is on loan to me from Stan, the owner of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Guys, go ahead and give SS Pond a call and they will take care of all of your firearms needs. And Stan's been a longtime supporter of the channel, so we'd like to show them a little bit of support back once in a while. All right, guys, so when it comes to, to taking apart a 1911, I don't have a lot of experience with them. I've only had two I've actually fired and or owned um, in my short firearm shooting experience. Um, you know, when it comes to breakdown and, and taking them apart, they can all be a little bit different, but it's really not that hard to do. Uh, so what we're going to do is just talk about some of the basic items you're going to need to start off here if you want to do the clean, and then what the process is going to actually encompass. So we'll go ahead and get started. So in terms of cleaners and so on, I'm just going to use straight up CLP, uh, Safari Land. We're not going to worry about rim oil for this one. Uh, some Q-tips for some fine detail work. You know, you can use old toothbrushes if you have them sitting around. Uh, we just got some gun brushes here that I picked up. Uh, these are, I think these are Hoppies or Outers or Otters, whatever brand it is. Nothing too crazy. Uh, these little cleaning rods that we have here with the bristle brushes on them, they actually came from different pistols and uh, we'll be using them in this, uh, in the bore, in the barrel. Um, got just a single cleaning rod with a patch on the end of it. We can use that to clean out when we get done. Now, if you want to do, you know, if you have just a basic cleaning kit, uh, you can just use your cleaning rod one piece. Make sure you got yourself a 45 caliber bore brush. You can use that to clean out the barrel. Uh, we're also going to be using that too. And some cotton patches. Now, normally, guys, I've got a cup of coffee sitting here whenever I do a cleaning video. Uh, the truth is, is I've had enough coffee today, I think, to kill a small woodland creature in terms of the amount of caffeine. So we're going to go ahead and pass on the coffee, and I'm going to try to uh, keep my pace uh, relatively slow as we go through the whole process. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started uh, cleaning this pistol up. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and eject the magazine. Okay, no rounds there. Go ahead and pull back on the slide, check the chamber, check the bore. Okay, that is empty. We're good to go. All right, and we'll go ahead and continue from there. Okay, guys, so for this particular model of 1911, what you're going to have to do is push in on this plunger on the front, but you're going to have to make sure that the slide doesn't move back at the same time. Um, there are tools that they make that make this uh, fairly simple. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those tools because I don't have any 45s in my collection. So we're going to move on to the next step. Essentially, you want to find anything you can use, either your finger or something you can press against the bottom of the plunger. And when you push in on it, you're going to need to uh, rotate your barrel either clockwise or counterclockwise. We'll figure that out once we get there. And there's going to be the end of the barrel piece, the end of the slide that's going to come straight up. So I just want to explain it to you real quick in case I have kind of an odd angle going on here when we do it um, because it can be sometimes a little bit complicated but that's really the only tough part about the disassembly of the 45 or at least the Taurus 45 ACP. All right so let's go ahead and move on. Okay so the easiest way I like to do this is just go ahead and set the pistol down on your towel. Okay just go ahead and make sure you get a good grip on it. Um, what I like to do is just take the flat part of a sharpie and you're going to press on the bottom of the circle and you can see how the plunger moves down. Okay we're going to go ahead and push that down and then we're going to slide across and rotate the little end cap here on the end of the slide, okay? Now kind of let it sit about like that. You want to keep your finger on it. And then just go ahead and keep turning it and keep pressure on it because that spring is going to be fairly tight, all right? And your little plunger piece is going to come off the end of the slide. Okay, you got your little uh, recoil spring right here. Go ahead and take that out with the uh, plunger, as I like to call it. There is no button on the end of this, and I don't know if it's supposed to come with one or if that's just how these torses are. Okay, then after that, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, now we're a little close up here. There's a notch right here. This is essentially the notch that you're going to use to press on the takedown lever slash slide stop that you have right here on the side of the pistol. So just go ahead and slide that back so that that little notch lines up with the rear of your takedown uh, lever. Okay, slide stop, just like that. Now on the back side, you got a little bump here. Okay, you can simply push on that and you can just pull this slide stop lever out. Okay, go ahead and set that off to the side. And we should be able to just slide the slide forward and everything's going to come right off. There you go. Okay. Got that all taken care of. All right. Let's move on to the next step. Okay. We'll kind of take a look at the frame here. Very, uh, very nice, robust build. Seems to be heavy duty, almost true to like the GI style uh, internals. Uh, very similar to the Rock Island Armory. 1911 that I owned for a while, the GI style 1911. Um, now I noticed it did have red lithium grease on the rails here, and that's perfectly fine. I think you'd be okay doing that. Um, I do that on my AKs, on the uh, the bolt carrier group, and so on. Uh, but for this, you know, I, I use CLP on the Rock Island 45, and never had a problem with this. So we're just going to use CLP on the uh, the frame here, including the rails of the of the 45 ACP. So let's just go ahead and start by cleaning out the channel where the dust cover is. 
I'm gonna go ahead and clean the front out. Now Taurus guns, I'm just gonna say this right now, they have they have an interesting metal that they use. I've noticed this in a lot of Taurus and uh, Rossi pistols and firearms that I've that I've owned before. Um, it's it's almost like the metal has a tendency to lightly oxidize. I don't really say rust because it doesn't start to pit out or anything like that, but you get an unusual kind of a, a red film that comes off on your cleaning tissues and stuff when you use on your patches. And so uh, I don't know. It's just, just, just something about maybe it's just the Brazilian steel that they used to make them from. I'm not sure exactly, but it's never really been an issue. But it's just something I've always kind of found unique to the Taurus guns, regardless of the finish. They always have this kind of this funky red uh, stuff that comes off. So don't worry about that if you have it. It's no big deal. Um, I really do need to do a little bit of research and see if you should be greasing the rails and the internals. I, I've never had a problem with CLP. It's always done the job for me. So what we're doing is we're just going through and just kind of scrubbing stuff out a little bit. Give it a nice scrub down, especially where the feed ramps are. It's dirty. I can tell it's been shot a little bit. I don't know how much. It really doesn't seem too worn down. Um, you know, a Taurus gun's not to rip on them, but your finishes aren't always the you know the highest quality, most durable. You're not dealing with you know melanite here, and so a hundred rounds can can maybe sometimes make the finish look like say five or six hundred rounds on on a lot of other guns. Um, and so it's really not you know it's not the end of the world. It's just how they are. It's kind of part of saving the money with them. Okay, now we're going to go and take this uh, little single piece cleaning rod here, put a little bit of CLP on it. And this part's optional, but I always recommend you do it just because especially if you holster carry a lot of guns or if you have your guns exposed to the elements, uh, go ahead and clean out your magazine well. And it's just because there could be some crud in there. Sometimes you got some springs in there. Just give it a good scrub. It's not going to hurt anything. I mean, I do this on all my pistols. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Just to show you is the reason why you should probably do it. Uh, go and get it from the front. You know, it might help out with uh, magazine uh, insertion and extraction and so on, although it's not really that big of a deal, but yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's reason enough to definitely do it. And you know what? I'm going to probably do one more through it real quick, just so it's nice and clean. And then after that, you can run a dry patch through it if you want to. Um, I'll do that off camera just to save some time so you guys don't have to sit here and watch, but, um, and that'll get out any excess uh, oil. You don't want to over lubricate these things because over oiling stuff, it can cause issues in cold weather. Um, also, you can get a lot of dirt and crud that can start to build up on the oil itself. I know the whole point is to clean the gun, but you don't want ex an excessive amount. I mean, that is just nasty. Wow, this thing has, has seen a little bit of use, I got a feeling. I mean, it's not bad, but it's still not very good. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, put a little bit of, of CLP here on a, on a Q-tip, on a cotton swab. Just go ahead and run that down the rails. Give it a nice little, nice little wipe there on the top and on the sides. Okay. And basically, any metal on metal contact parts, you're safe putting the CLP on there. You're not going to have any problems. Okay. Okay. I'll go ahead and catch this one next. There we go. Now I know I'm sure there's going to be some some 1911 purists, and I do encourage you guys to go ahead and chime in and give me some some tips and pointers about special parts that I should be watching for when it comes to cleaning and lubrication, or recommendations for you guys that have been shooting them for a long time. You know, it's a nice traditional design, and if you take care of it, it should last you definitely a lifetime. Okay, now we'll do some some wiping off of the lower handle and stuff a little bit later once we're done cleaning this part of the pistol off. Okay, now we'll go ahead and continue with the uh, the disassembly of the slide. We're going to clean this up a little bit, and uh, we'll get ready to take the slide and the guide rod apart, and we will go from there. Now, I'll have uh, some people make comments sometimes saying, man, that thing is just over lubricated. You know, I tend to go over these with a damp or just a dry patch uh, or just a lightly like rem oil patch just to kind of take off any excess oil. So if the thing's just dripping with oil, obviously, you know, you want to wipe that excess off. You don't want any excess of oil. Again, just a thin protective coating is all you want. So this uh, end cap here, that's your guide rod and your spring goes in. We want to go ahead and just wipe that off. And again, that's that's fairly dirty. Using my little single piece cleaning rod with the patch, we're going to clean that out. You can see it needed a little bit of love, didn't it? Yes, it did. Okay, get that all taken care of. Oh, man, that's, ooh, this thing is going to, it's going to clean up well the second time after we get back from the range. I can tell you that. So get that all taken care of. We'll go ahead and wipe off this uh, little end cap here for the slide. I'm sorry if I don't know the names of all these parts, guys. Um, I mean, I'm totally a gun guy, but the 1911, nothing wrong with it. But I've only, like I said, I've only owned one. And I've only shot, I think, maybe two on the channel, maybe only one on the channel. There was a Springfield that we took out, uh, which ran pretty good for us. And then, like I said, I own my Rock Island Armory. But I actually got rid of that before I started making YouTube videos or before I started doing range tests. So, okay, take the little end cap and put that off to the side. Put the plunger off to the side. And we got your little takedown lever here, backslash slide stop. Now, some guys like to call them a slide release. I just call it a slide stop, and that tends to keep the purists happy. Uh, you know, the fit and finish on the parts seems to be pretty good. I think this gun was made in 2007, 
or at least that's when the manual was printed. Um, looking on the back of the box, there's like an 07 or 08. There's a date on the back of it with a piece of tape. And so I'm guessing maybe that's when the gun was put back and purchased by the original owner, but I'm not sure. Like I said, this is just a loaner from, uh, from the owner of SS Pond from his private collection. So uh, go ahead and just wipe off your recoil spring. Let's give it all a nice cleaning. Okay, now again, disassembly of the slide, really not that hard to do. Just set all that stuff off to the side. Um, what you want to do is just go ahead and pull back and go ahead and pull out your guide rod, set that off to the side, and you can just go ahead and take your barrel out. Got a little locking lug nut here, a little cam. Oh yeah, that's right, these just go right through the front, don't they? My bad. Okay, there we go. Okay, and again, there's some red lithium grease on the barrel. We're going to go ahead and wipe all this stuff off and just do CLP, which is perfectly fine. So at this point, what you want to do is just go ahead and shoot a little bit of CLP down the barrel. That's what I call marinating the barrel. You just go ahead and let it soak in there, kind of deep clean a little bit while you wipe everything else off. Once it starts to uh, start coming out of the end here, uh, you know you're pretty much at a point where uh, you can go ahead and uh, continue with your cleaning. Just let that sit for a second. Okay, here it comes. Okay. All right, now go ahead and just spray a little bit of CLP on the uh, guide rod. Okay. Get yourself a nice clean patch and just wipe it all off. Uh, reassembly on this isn't going to be too bad. You know, it might take me a little bit of practice before we get it on camera. But uh, you know, like I said, I, it took me forever to figure out how to take a, take apart my my Rock Island 1911. And part of it was I don't know why I was just too dumb to look up a video on YouTube. But um, the disassembly manual didn't have any pictures at all. It just had words in it, so I had no clue what I was doing. Which is probably not the smartest thing to do with a gun. Um, I usually, you know, will watch a, another video on how to do something with a gun or read the manual, etc. Okay, so give everything a nice clean off. Yeah, this thing is pretty dirty. And again, you're going to have CLP running out of here, and that's perfectly fine. I think what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, the single piece cle single piece cleaning rod with the copper brush, the, the brass um, bristle brush, to clean this out. So give this a nice wipe off on the outside, okay? And then go ahead and just hit it with a dry patch and just go ahead and wipe it all off. Again, you can give everything a thin, a thin coat of oil before you reassemble it. You know, sometimes you don't really don't even have to do that much to it. Just, uh, just enough to make sure it's protected. Okay, got that all taken care of. Barrel looks nice. Okay, now we'll go ahead and just take the cleaning rod and go from the back to the front. Now, this is a 45 caliber bore brush. We're just going to go forward and back on it. Typically, you just go through the front, take the brush off, and pull back. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab my other brush. This one's a little bit, a little bit larger diameter. Go and give it a scrub. Go from the front, give it a scrub. These are real soft bristles. Um, this is just something to break up the, the crap that's in the barrel. That starts to build up, excuse me, burnt powder, all that fun stuff. Okay, and then I got just a nylon brush too, just to kind of finish the job. That one's even thicker. That's probably it. This might have been one that came with my Rock Island. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, run through it a couple times. Uh, I do, I am a big advocate of boar, boar snakes. I really do like those. I think they save a lot of time. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have one in a 45 caliber, so unfortunately I can't um, use that on it. Just whiz right through and clean it in two seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and just wipe off the uh, rod here, guide rod. Okay, go ahead and set that off to the side. And uh, yes, okay, next step, what we want to do is just go ahead and run a dry patch. Put it on your single piece cleaning rod, whether you're using the brass rod or if you're using a plastic rod like mine. I really don't even know what this came with. I think Glocks might come with something like this. I, it's just something I kept from one of my pistols that I bought and uh, never got rid of it. So, okay, go ahead and just run it through the rear. You can see how dirty that is. You're going to want to run a couple patches through it until nothing else comes off on it. I can just give it a good scrub. doesn't matter if you go from the, the back to the front or front to the back. Just to get it cleaned up nice. And it's actually nice and clean here. Let's let you check a look. Check, take, that, take a look at that. There you go. Okay, it looks good. You can see the rifling in the barrel. Okay, go and take that out. Uh, okay, this isn't totally filthy, so we're just going to go ahead and wipe off these little notches on the top. You can get a lot of buildup on here. Sometimes you want to hit that with a bristle brush, and, and I haven't had to take the brush to this because it wasn't so crusty with carbon and fouling and powder that it needed it. Um, but I'd say the barrel is good to go. Okay, I'll go and set that off to the side. Now for the slide, we're going to go ahead and just uh, put a little bit of CLP in there. Let's zoom in a little bit for you here, guys. Just spray a little bit on the top, okay? Now just use your fingers, kind of wipe it around, rub it around all the surfaces, get in there. She's pretty dirty. Probably going to use my cleaning rod and get down here also uh, with the patch on the end of it. So, okay, let that just go ahead and sit for just a moment. Okay, now what I want to do is we're going to go ahead and take a, um, get another Q-tip. So let's go ahead and get in these channels and get these scrubbed out. That's just absolutely carboned up. And again, you have a nice clean gun, should ensure that the gun is going to function better uh, than if it has any kind of uh, 
build up inside of it. Oh, this thing's gonna need some definite TLC. All right, let's go ahead and hit the rails. Rails also have that lithium grease in them also, so. Uh, but like I said, you know, if you do this a couple times, once you get a nice deep clean on your gun, you do it a few times when you come back from the range, you'll be surprised with how much faster and easier it is to do. You'll be spending a lot less time than we're doing right here today, I can tell you that, so. Okay, now the front of this, we're gonna go ahead and hit this with a patch and just see how bad it is where your striker comes out, the rear of your slider, the center part of your receiver here. Go ahead and scrub on that. It's not too bad, it actually looks fairly clean. Uh, you can hit that with a brush if you want to. Get behind the little extractor hook right here, the part that uh, grips onto the shell and ejects it. And then just start to wipe out the uh, wipe out the inside of the slide. So tell you what guys, I'm gonna spend a few minutes, I'm just gonna start wiping this out with a, with a, um, a, a lightly oil coated patch. And then I'll come back, again, you can take a cleaning rod down here if you want to and clean it out from the front and the back. I'm gonna go over the whole thing, just give it a good scrub. You do the same thing, we'll come back in a minute, we'll go ahead and continue with reassembly, okay? All right, hang tight. Okay, moving on. So if you just happen to be kind of a noob uh, to 45s and so on, or if this is your first one, uh, reassembly is basically the opposite of disassembly. So just go ahead and take your barrel, and you want to slide it through the front of the pistol. Okay, it's going to sit back against your inside here, rear of the receiver. Okay, I will figure out the little uh, cam here in just a second. And then go ahead and take your guide rod, and you can go in from the front. Just set it down so it's nice and flat. Again, you've got your curved portion here. This portion is going to sit on the barrel. So just go ahead and put that in, okay? All right, now we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Now I'm sure the uh, season 45 ACP experts are probably gonna criticize me on this one or the 1911 experts, but I like to reassemble it upside down just because you got this little loop right here. Uh, that is going to have to show through this hole right here and it's gonna have to align uh, for the uh, takedown lever. So just go ahead and hold it like this. Make sure you've got everything pushed back. Your barrel looks like this. You got your guide rod sitting back here. The little loop right here needs to be upright when you put it back together. Just go ahead and slide your frame back onto the pistol. Oh, let's see here, we got a little thing we gotta push on, okay. Okay, there we go. Now go ahead and flip it around. All right, so now that we can see all the way through it, there's nothing blocking this hole here. We basically have that little loop coming off the barrel, that little loop that we were showing you that's basically around the outside of the circle. Okay, go ahead and take your takedown lever and just go ahead and press it in there. Now what you want to do is just go ahead and pull back on your slide to the point that this little notch right here and the square in the frame all line up. This is basically going to allow you to push your takedown lever right back in. And I had to kind of fiddle with this a little bit off camera, so that back into place here. Come on now, there we go. There we go. Okay, lock back into place. Now go ahead and push your Slide back forward, and we will go from there. All right, guys, so for uh, Rias, let me just go ahead and put your plunger, as I like to call it, back onto the spring. Make sure that the open end of the spring goes into the plunger, and that your circular portion, the round curved part, okay, this enclosed portion, uh, goes into the gun on back onto the guide rod. Now, we're actually gonna do this in two parts, because this part can be a little bit tricky. It may be a little bit frustrating for, uh, again, a 40, first timer when it comes to disassembling this pistol. Just go ahead and put the uh, spring back onto the guide rod. Now, what I like to do at this point is to just go ahead and take your barrel bushing and uh, just kind of put it loosely on top, but you're not gonna be able to block it because if you do, your plunger is not gonna go into place. So just kind of pull up a little bit and just kind of keep it off to the side like that. You wanna maybe put it more like a three o'clock position where the curve is and then just let it sit. That way when you push down on this, all we have to do is slide down and lock into place and we should be all set to go. All right, so just bear with me and we'll get through this last portion. Okay, now for this next part, essentially you're going to push down on this plunger to the point that it gets just below the bottom of the frame, and then you're going to take your barrel bushing about the four o'clock position, push down, snap, and then curve, and lock the plunger into place. Unfortunately, it's really hard for me to do this with this camera angle, so I'm gonna do that and come back and show you what it's gonna look like reassembled. So again, the procedure, make sure that your slide stays up. You're gonna push down on this with the plunger, okay? And you're gonna wanna push down with the barrel bushing. You're gonna to wanna to push down on that. See how it pops right out? And uh, once you hit the four o'clock position, it'll snap into place and slide over and lock the uh, plunger back into place, okay? So again, I apologize if my hands are blocking it. This is always the hardest part about the uh, 45 reassembly for me, and I'm sure there's probably an easier way to do it. So again, if you guys wanna chime, out, chime on in, that'd be good to know. I guess we're gonna push on that with our thumb. Put the four o'clock position. There we go. Okay, got it in a good spot here. Press down. Oh, come on, baby. Ah, there we go. And I go slide. Whew. 
All right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, uh, again, not easy if it locks into place, it should. But just like that, you wanna be really, really careful with that because that spring is under pressure. Again, uh, I try to make this stuff look as easy as possible, but for pistols like this, unfortunately, it's not always that simple. So let's go ahead and do a quick uh, action check here. Just pull back the slide a couple times. It's nice and smooth now. It was a little gritty before. It's got a very, very tight spring in it. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the magazine back in. Lock it back into place, check the chamber, make sure it's empty. Go ahead and press your slide stop, release the slide, or you can top charge if you want to to let go. Okay, squeeze on the back of the grip and dry fire. Okay, try that again. Okay, and she's good to go. Okay, so that's it guys, that's not bad. Like I said, 45's a little bit difficult sometimes when it comes to disassembly. Uh, you know, cleaning and stuff, It's or reassembly I should say, cleaning and stuff, not too bad. Uh, what I'm going to do is just give this just a, just a basic wipe down with a, with a light patch with some CLP on it. And uh, we should be ready to go. I should be bringing it to you, taking it to the range uh, hopefully this week. So maybe about seven days after you see the cleaning video, you should see the range test video. So guys, there you have it. Um, my thanks go out to Stan at SS Pond for loaning me your pistol. And uh, guys, if you like what you see, please like or subscribe. You can check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm also over on uh, gunchannels.com with the Saturday morning podcast called The Caliber Corner. Uh, you can check me out over there, guys. Otherwise, I think that's about it. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can support me at www.patreon.com backslash TravisP11 and uh, help keep the channel going, guys. So there you go. Okay, so thanks for joining us today. I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, guys. Bye-bye.